So instead of doing what we did at the top of the page, which was to multiply it all out and first find the expanded polynomial form, we could use the product rule, and all it says is the derivative of the first piece times the second piece plus the derivative of the second piece times the first piece. So we're going to do it. So we're going to use the one we used at the top of the page. So this is our function. So I'm going to write it down again so that it's, oh, it's, it's already written down. So this is the function. We'll call this piece f of x and we'll call this piece g of x just for the purposes of keeping it all straight in our head. I know it's calling the whole thing f of x, but we're going to say this is f of x and this is g of x. Did we have a question like this on the page? No. We haven't learned how to do this yet. Okay, so it says to find the derivative of the first piece. What's the derivative of this first piece? Two. Two. Times the second piece. No derivative, just the second piece. So the second piece is x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then we're going to add to that the first piece times the derivative of the second piece. Or it doesn't matter what order you do this in, because remember multiplication is commutative. It can be done in any order. So I usually prefer to find the derivative first. This is going to be 2x minus 2 times the other piece. And then we just have to simplify that. And you should get, when you simplify it, the exact same answer that we got at the top of the page. Because it's the derivative of the exact same function. Okay, so obviously, at the top of the page, finding the polynomial, in this case, wasn't hard. And finding the derivative of it, of it wasn't hard. So you could probably make an argument that doing what we did at the top of the page was just as easy as product rule, which is what this next thing says. Students often wonder why this rule is so important if we could write the polynomial as easily as we just did and just find the derivative. But the answer is quite simple. If it is possible to rewrite it as a polynomial, that's what you'll do because that's easy enough. But there are some things that cannot be rewritten as polynomials. For example, this right here, g of x equals x squared sine x, cannot be written as a polynomial. It's just two separate pieces, and we're going to have to apply product rule in this case. So in this case, let's say this is your first piece. We'll call it f of x. This is your second piece. We'll call it g of x, just for the purposes of using the product rule. So product rule says find the derivative of the first piece. So what's the derivative of x squared? 2x, multiply that by the second piece, so sine x, plus the derivative of the second piece, what's the derivative of sine x, <laughs> times the second piece, so I'm going to write it with the x squared in first, x squared plus sine x. Okay, so that's my derivative. Now, it specifically asks me to find the slope of the normal line. What's the normal line? The, not, the line perpendicular to the tangent. So, in this case, it's not asking me for the tangent line. But this will give me the slope of the tangent line. And then what do I need to do? <coughs> Flip it and switch the sign. So, but let's, oops, let's plug in first and find the slope of the tangent line. And then we'll flip it and switch it. So, we're plugging in pi this time. Okay, remember pi is all the way over here. What's the ordered pair over there? Negative one, zero. 
So your y value is 0. So the first piece goes away. So I got negative pi squared. That's the slope of the tangent line. Normal line. B one over pi squared. Positive one over pi squared. Okay. So this is all about using product rule. Now, it did say. We will normally, if it's easier to find the polynomial, we'll just find the polynomial and take the derivative, just like you've been doing. But for the purposes of this, at this particular assignment, because we're learning product rule, it says to use the product rule. So we are using product rule regardless. All right. So remember what your product rule says. I'll write it at the top. The derivative of the quad h prime of x is the derivative of the first piece times the second, second piece plus the derivative of the second piece times the first piece. Okay, so in this case, this is my first piece. This is my second piece. Derivative of the first piece would be 4x plus 3. So before I actually find the derivative of the first piece, I'm going to go across the page, not down the page. Instead of, uh, before I find the derivative of the first piece, I am going to rewrite it as x to the 1 half. But because this activity specifically wants me to use product rule, I am not going to distribute the 1 half into the binomial. Okay, so the Okay, so I take the derivative of the first piece, which gives me 1 half x to the negative 1 half times the second piece just like it is. Derivative of the second piece, which will be 2x minus 3 times the first piece. It's just easier for me to put it in front because I'm about to distribute it. Is everybody okay? What do you do with exponents when you multiply? Uh, Thank you. 
What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine x. There is nothing wrong with that answer. However, they will probably more than likely distribute the negative sine x into both of these pieces. actually have um, two pieces that could technically be found in the product rule, but the first one, the derivative of this is just 3. So we find the derivative of the first piece, which is just 3, and then we have to find the derivative of this second piece using product rule. So the derivative of the first piece is just 1, right? Because the first piece, the first piece of this is the theta. And the derivative of theta is 1. So that'd be 1 times sine theta. Do I? Okay. Ignore this. I'm Now I'm using product rule. They do. I'm not done. So this, this piece, I just find the derivative. Just like we do in polynomial. Okay, so if I have if I have this I find the derivative of this piece, 6x, then I find the derivative of this piece, which is 4. Yes? Same thing. Find the derivative of this piece, which is 3. Find the derivative of this piece, have to use product rule. Because it's got two pieces in it. Okay, so I found the 3, and now I'm gonna ignore the rest, the, that, because I've already done it. Now I'm finding the derivative of this. So 1 times sine x plus theta cosine x. I mean co cosine theta, so it's still. Okay, so it ends up being 3 plus sine theta plus theta. Which one? This one? The derivative, okay. Uh, oh, you got it? So the derivative of this is 1 times sine theta. Okay, so on, on this next one, on h of x, this one's pretty straightforward. You got the first piece. Hey, for real, it, seriously, I am now to the point that if you don't want to be in calculus, just get out. But there are people who want to be in here who think they're going to go to college to maybe be engineers or something else. And there's a reason for them to be in here. If you don't want to be in, then get out. That's what I'm telling mine. <laughs> um, except I'm saying if you don't want to do this, go back inside the room. When we do the matching, and don't stop now, but be thinking about it. When we do the, the matching application, there is no graph up there to match. It's just giving us a blank and a blank. One's velocity, one is acceleration, or one is uh, When you open that matching graph? Yes. It should have a graph in it. I know. I don't know if these guys have played with it and changed the settings, but be thinking about that. Okay. Okay. First piece, second piece. The derivative of the first piece would be cosine x times cosine x plus negative sine x times sine x, which ends up being cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And you can leave it like that. That that also is a trig identity, by the way, which is two so two cosine squared theta minus one. It's the double, um, not theta, but x in this case. Okay. So now it says find the equation of the line tangent to this graph. Blah blah blah. So if we're going to find the tangent line, we've got to find the slope of the tangent line, which means we need to find the derivative. In this case, we have to use product rule because we have two pieces being multiplied.
so there's my derivative. They specifically want me to find it at pi over 6. Once I plug in, now I'm just simplifying. So 2 times pi over 6, the 2 goes into the 6, so it ends up pi over 3. What is cosine at pi over 6? Square root of 3 over 2. This is at my, uh, pi squared over 36. And sine at pi over 6 is... Pi square root of 3 over 6. Minus pi squared over 72. Now they asked me for the slope, of, they asked me to find the equation of the tangent line which means I've got to have a slope of the tangent line and I have to have a POT. Because this is written like this, I really need to combine it all into one thing because it needs to be the slope. So you need to get a common denominator, which would be 72. So this piece is going to have to be have to be rewritten with a 72 on bottom, so it ends up being 12 pi. There's my slope. I still need my POT. How do I find a POT? Plug it in, plug the value into the original function. So d of pi over 6. Now it says to rewrite in polynomial form and find it the other way. So I'm going to write this as x to the 1 half and distribute first.
so what is the lesson to be learned from doing this that way before and this way? Yeah. Look and see if it can be rewritten in polynomial form, because if it can be, polynomial form is a lot easier. This was a whole lot easier than using product rule. So, So given uh, this g of x, what do you think we need to do on the next one? I think we should probably go ahead and write it as a polynomial. Let's foil it out and instead of using product rule, it'll be easier. Besides that, we've got three pieces, which makes product rule a whole different thing. Yeah, it's different. Can you add that together when you do that? It is. It's different. We'll learn it. Multiply it all out, combine like terms. This I, I got this to be my g of x in polynomial form, and then I took the derivative. They specifically asked me for slope of the normal line when x equals two, and this is going to give me slope of the tangent line. Um, so I'm going to have to plug in two and then switch it. My normal line has a slope of negative 1 over 52. Get the derivative of this negative 4. 
Can I get the derivative of this? What is it? Ne it should be negative 1. Uh, because if you look at the line, it's just linear. And the line has a slope of negative 1. So the derivative of the first piece is negative 1. Does everybody understand where I got that? I'm looking for this piece. So I went to the graph and I found the slope. And the slope right here happens to be up 1 over 1. It's up 1 left 1, so it's negative. It's following line. So it has a derivative of negative 1. Times g of x at negative 4. So I go to g of x, go over to negative 4. 6. Is everybody okay with where I got that value? It was just straight up g of x, not the derivative, so I went straight to the graph and got the value off the graph. Now it says the derivative. This one they gave to me. They gave me the derivative at 4 is 2 times f of x. Well, that's f at negative 4, which also happens to be negative 1. So I got negative 6 minus 2. So p prime of 4, the derivative at 4 is negative 8. Everybody okay? Negative 8. Oh, negative 4. Yes, sorry. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with r. They gave you the r function up here at the top. So they said r of x is x squared times g of x. So if you want the... So this one's a little backwards because they gave me the derivative of r at 20 and I'm going backwards and looking for the derivative of g. So I need the derivative, the function, or the equation for the derivative of r of x. It would be 2x times g of x plus g And now I'm going to work backwards. Because they told me the derivative at negative 2 is 20. So I'm going to set this function equal to 20. I know my x value is negative 2. g at negative 2. Yes, it should. 